Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and this video will be about the 521 Compressor Saver Hard Start Kit. Now, I already have a video where I talk about when and why a hard start kit should be put into an air conditioner unit. So if you're interested in that, why it should be put in, go ahead and check that video out. And then also at the end of that video, I show an example of how to wire an SPP6 hard start kit, a two wire kit. Now, I've, bought, I've got a lot of comments on that video of people asking me to also make a video showing how to install a 521 hard start kit because it has three wires. So I finally got around to doing that today. So let's put that in. And I was also asked to explain the difference between them and why the 521 is better than the SPP6 hard start kit. And that is simply because, I'll try to summarize it. This one is basically temperature operated. So when the compressor gets up to speed, this thing becomes hot. It's a PTC relay in here. This gets hot and it takes the start capacitor out of the circuit. Now, before this thing will turn back on, this needs to cool off a little bit to close that switch back up. And in very hot climates and hotter states, this can be a bad thing because this does not have enough time to cool off if it's 100 degrees outside. This won't have enough time to cool off and this will not actually engage when the compressor or the AC starts up next time. In Minnesota, I haven't noticed that to be a problem, probably because it's not as hot here, so I always use these SPP6 hard start kits. In those other areas, maybe the 521 is a better idea because it's gravity assisted instead. So once there's enough back EMF, or once the compressor is up to speed, that thing just drops down, the relay in there drops down and takes the start capacitor out of the circuit. So in the end, which one is better? The two wire hard start kit or the three wire hard start kit with the separate potential relay? And the answer is the three wire hard start kit is better. It functions better, it's better quality, and it doesn't have that cool off time like this temperature operated one does. But the problem with these is that they cost two or three times more than the two wire hard start kits. Although they do have some two wire hard start kits that have a potential relay built into them on top. Usually the head will be a little bigger. I believe it was Kickstart that made those. But yeah, generally these are gonna be cheaper. These are more expensive, but they are better quality. And if it's always like 100 degrees where you live, then maybe this is a better option for you, the three wire hard start kit. So all of that being said, now let me show you quick how you would wire a three wire 521 hard start kit. So I already have my unit opened up. It's getting a little dark now. Earlier it started to rain, so I had to pause the video. Turn on a flashlight. So wiring these up is not that hard, but before you do anything, make sure that you have the power off. My thermostat inside is already off. And then my disconnect, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out as well to disconnect my 240 line voltage. And you do always wanna double check and make sure that you don't have power at the contactor after you have the power disconnected because sometimes something may be bypassed and you're still getting either 120 or 240 volts. So I'll set my meter to voltage and here's my main power coming into the contactor. Just make sure that I got zero volts there. And I do, I have zero. So I'm safe to work on it now. And one last potential threat that there is that could bite you is the capacitor, uh, the start capacitor and the run capacitor. It might still have a little bit of a charge left in it after you turn it off. So you wanna short them out just by shorting the terminals together. And on my run capacitor, which is still in my unit, I would just stick the screwdriver in there and just touch all the terminals together to discharge them or short them out. And if by chance your power is somehow still on, you're probably gonna start seeing sparks. So that's obviously not a good thing. Make sure the power is off, discharge your capacitor, and then we are ready to put it in. So here is my 521 hard start kit. And if you look closer at the potential relay, you should see numbers on it. The terminal should be labeled five, there's one, and this one is two. You can barely see it, but the two is right over here. And most of these kits will come with a little wiring diagram to help you out. 
point you in the right direction how it should be wired. And I want to point this out as well. See how it says up right here? These potential relays are directional, meaning they do have to be mounted in a specific way. So this screw hole needs to be facing up. Otherwise this thing will not work correctly or it might not work correctly. So make sure when you're mounting these potential relays, you got the screw hole up. And in many cases, there's actually gonna be an, there's actually gonna be an arrow on the potential relay itself. I looked around on this one and there was no arrow, which I thought was kind of weird. But then after I looked at the wiring diagram, you know, at least they have the up right here. So we got our five, two, one. The five is gonna be our black wire. The two is gonna be the yellow. And the one is gonna be our red wire. Before we hook the wires up, let's go ahead and mount these things in here. Optimally, you want both of them to be facing up, this to be standing and this to be up as well. In my case, I'm probably gonna end up putting my SPP6 back in here after I'm done showing you this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this in here for now, just like that. And then I can mount the potential relay, let's say over here. The kit does come with two screws, quarter inch self-tapping screws. Malco flip bits, if you don't have one, you should get one. Quarter inch and 5 sixteenths. Before you drill any holes into the electrical section or into the electrical panel right here, make sure you look and make sure that the condenser fin coils or basically the condenser tubing is a little bit away from that back panel. Basically what you're looking for is to make sure that you're not gonna drill a screw into one of your pipes because then that's just a really bad day. So I have about three quarters of an inch behind this panel so I know I'm not gonna be drilling into anything. Let's go ahead and secure my potential relay. like that and the kit it does come with a little zip tie with the screw hole so you can easily mount this start capacitor in the vertical position with one of these and then just snip off the excess zip tie um, in my case like I said I'm probably gonna be taking this out so it doesn't really matter or if you were gonna leave it in here like this you could crimp the bracket like I did on my run capacitor right here. I crimped it so it's nice and secure. See how the start capacitor is loose here? If I wanted to, I could just take some Nipix alligator pliers and just crimp this down as well and have it nice and secure. I see them mounted horizontally like this all the time. I think as far as the start capacitor goes, it doesn't really matter too much if it's mounted horizontally or vertically, but the potential relay does matter. You want that one to be facing up the screw hole. And while I'm looking at it, notice this bleed resistor right here, this blue thing between the two terminals. That's actually there to bleed the capacitor when the unit powers off, which means that optimally, or not optimally, but usually there should be no charge here after the unit powers off because that's the function of this bleed resistor right here to bleed off any remaining charge. But still, better safe than sorry, I would still discharge any start capacitors and run capacitors before you start sticking your fingers in there. Where do these three wires go? Let's refer to our wiring diagram. So five goes to black or basically the common side of the contactor. So let's start with the black. And our common side is right here basically with all the other black wires. If you're not sure, I would refer to the wiring diagram of the condenser unit and see where the common, common wires, which side of the contactor, the common wires go to. So I'd plug the black in to one of these terminals on the contactor. So that was the black wire. And if you're wondering which side of the contactor Basically, wherever you have the power coming into the contactor, in my case, it's this side, all these wires are gonna be hooked up to the opposite side of the contactor. Next, we have the yellow striped wire. 
I have a dual run capacitor. That will go to Herm on the dual run capacitor. So let's see if we can see this on the side. Right here we got the terminals are common. There's fan and we're probably not going to be able to see the Herm but that last one is going to be our Herm. So we're going to plug this yellow wire right into Herm which stands for hermetically sealed compressor. So that's the terminal for the compressor. There you go. And lastly, we have our red wire, which comes from the one that goes to the start capacitor. And then from the start capacitor, it goes to the common on that dual run capacitor. So that goes right into the start capacitor, comes out from it and goes to the common. And our common is right up here. So we'll plug that into here. And voila, we got our hard start kit put in, the 521. And optimally, after you're done, you do wanna take a zip tie and just tidy it up a little bit so you don't have wires loose all over the place. And your install is complete. Well guys, and that is how you install a 521 hard start kit. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any other tips or suggestions or maybe corrections to all the stuff that I've said, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me show you something interesting that you may or may not know about your phone. So let me open up the notepad right here that I have. Notice how there's an ad on the top. These banner ads are pretty much on all the apps that you get that are free, or sometimes they're more interrupting than this. But if you turn off the data or the internet on your phone, turn that off, then let's cancel that app out. If you open up your notepad again, notice how there's no ad. A lot of these apps actually don't require the internet to work. So if you're tired of a ton of apps or maybe you're playing a game and ads are constantly interrupting you, if that game does not need internet, if you turn the internet off, the ads usually go away. So that's pretty awesome. Thought I would share it with you.